Welcome back folks. Today I'm going to show you an awesome way to create corner text. And I've got some pre-made pages already just to cut down on the time that it's going to take for us to walk through the method on creating this corner text. So I'm going to go ahead and place some text on my workspace in here in all caps type my first text box. Each text box is going to have to be on its own line and you can even reuse some of the text boxes over and over and over again. And um, I'll show you what I mean later on in the video. But what we're going to do is we're going to place each text box on its own page so we can work on it in the next steps. So here I've got some text. For the font, I'm actually going to use a font called Rustic Printed Stamp, which is this one right here. I'm going to be working with white text. So I'm going to change my background to black. And I'm going to take my text and I'm going to change it to white. Keep in mind that when we download this as transparent, it doesn't matter what color your background is. It's just going to make it a lot easier for you to see your text and edit your text. So I've got my text already created on pages. So this is the text that I'm going to be using and uh, some text I'm going to use more than once. So I'm going to go ahead, come to my share button because I need to download this, convert it to an image. So I'm going to click on the download button and I want pages one to five only. I do not want page six. And I'm going to download this as transparent. Now, when I'm downloading or you're downloading multiple pages, they are going to appear in a zip folder. Here it is. And I got asked a question in one of my recent videos saying, hey, where did your files go? Um, where do they go? Well, they go to the downloads folder. You can't change that. That's where your files are going to go. And you're not going to see those images unless you extract that zipped folder. Um, so Canva will save one image alone in your downloads folder. But when you are downloading multiple images, PNG or JPEG, they will end up in a zip folder. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say extract all. We're going to get this pop up and we can say extract. So here are my images right here in this folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just minimize that for a second. I'm just going to go down to the page where I'm going to be using these. I'll grab them and I'll just drag them right into my workspace. Now you're going to notice that I have this grid on my workspace. I'm going to take those and I'm just going to put them right there. Now, what I've done here is I've just gone to my elements and I've searched for a parallelogram. Um, so if we go into graphics, um, just grab any parallelogram like this and then create your grid. So I'm going to change that to yellow just so that you can see that a little bit better. This one doesn't seem to be long enough. Um, so you need to find the right one for your design. For me, I'm just going to go back to my recently used. And this is the one that I used. I'm going to change that to yellow. I'll get rid of this one. So here it is right here. And when I rotate it to 90 degrees, I can just place it there then I can make a duplicate and I can flip that and place it on the other side to create a grid. This is what I'm doing here is I'm creating a grid so that I know where to size the text that is going to be going on an angle. And then you can color code each little cell so that it makes it easier for you when you are arranging your text. In the end, we're going to be deleting this, but 
I'll just delete these for now because I don't need those two cells. I'm going to be working with these cells right here and my text over here on this side. I'm going to take my text and I'm just going to try and arrange it in the order that I'm going to be using it. All right, so I'm going to take my first text and I'm going to bring it over here next to my shape. Um, we're going to go to one apps and we're going to search for the reshape app. This is what it looks like right here. And we're going to be using the distort function. So I'm going to click on that. And when you first open up the reshape app, you're going to see these notches all the way around your work area. And the best way to use the reshape app is to actually place it on top of uh, an object as a guide. And that's why I created this grid with these parallelograms. So essentially what I want to do is I want to follow the contour of the parallelogram or the perimeter, the shape of this parallelogram. So, and these notches, they allow us to reshape this image to, so that it will contour around that shape. So when I grab one of those sides and I move it, it actually reshapes the image. So you can see I'm trying to line up my purple line, that top line with the top line of my parallelogram. And we can move this shape from within our work area. But you always want to keep your text when you're saving viewable because otherwise it'll get cut off. So I'm going to move this up and kind of match the angle of that top of that shape. And I'm going to grab this one. And again, I'm also going to do the same thing. And you also want to keep the side straight as well, or make it align with your object. It's a little bit crooked, so I need to straighten it out a little bit. Over here, it's a little bit crooked as well. So we can see that when we put it on top, it, it is straight now, straight, straight, straight. Okay, and we can also have the option to stretch our design. But again, when you're stretching, you want to make sure that you're keeping everything still um, matching the perimeter of your shape. Okay, once you're happy with your design, then you can come back down here and press the save button. I'm going to do the same thing with you like here. And I'll hit the distort button. And you want to make sure that your image is actually in the view of your working area right here. If I were to say save K and E would be cut off. So you want to move that up so that it's not cut off. I'll just say save and then I'll move it back down in position. I'm going to move along to my next text box, this one right here. But before I place it on my grid, I'm going to make a duplicate because I'm going to be using this twice. So I'll just grab one of them and I'll move it over here. I'll open up the distort function. And again, I'm going to grab the corners and just try and match it up with my parallelogram. Going to grab the second one and I'm going to put it over here because I'm going to be using it going from right to left this time.
And again, I'm going to make a duplicate because I'm going to be using this one twice. Now, before we move on to the last text box, we're going to just arrange our text up here. So using my grid, I'm just going to grab these text boxes. And I'm going to make my text a little bit larger. Now for this one, I'm using this one twice. So I'm just going to make that a little bit larger, like that. And I'm going to crop this right at the R. I'm going to grab this one on the other side. I'm going to Make it larger and I'm going to try and match the R as much as possible. So I think I'll leave it like that and I'll do the last one. Trying to get the H on top of the other one that's coming from the other side like that to kind of create like a corner effect on the H. So let's grab our last text right here. I'm going to put this right in there. And again, I'm going to go to the distort option. And for here, I'm trying to match the blue, the bottom perimeter of the blue shape, as well as the bottom perimeter of the purple shape. So this is kind of going to be like a little bit of a different So let's see. So that seems to be matching there. But now I have to match this shape here with the text. So I'm just going to move that up there. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it so that the text looks like it's going underneath like that. And, you know, you're not going to get this on the first try. You're going to have to, you know, try and try again. But you know what they say, practice makes perfect. I'm going to press the save button. So here it is right here. And that's pretty good, I think. And so it's now time for us to get rid of that grid. So I'm going to click on my background, go to position. I'm going to grab these parallelograms, get rid of them. And I'm now going to grab my text. I'll start with the one, this one here. Just going to crop that a little bit. All right, let's add a shadow. So we're going to go back up to elements. I'm going to grab this shadow that I used previously. I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to try and place it right on the corner. There it is right there. 
I'm going to decrease the transparency a little bit like that. I'm going to go to position and layers and I'm going to move this bottom text box to the top so it's sitting on top of that shadow so we don't see that shadow running through it. Now, if you want to change the color of any of these text boxes or images, you can just click on them, go to edit and go to dual tone, and then you can change it to any color that you like. So this is it, guys. What do you think about this? Did you learn anything in this tutorial? Did you like it? Um, Tell me, did you find this challenging? Because I can see how this might be really, really challenging. Let me know in the comments. Let me know how you feel about your comfort level with using an app like Reshape. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. If you learned anything, press the like button, subscribe, and turn your notification bell on. If you want to learn more about my live classes, just ask me in the comments. For now, my friends, I'll say bye-bye until next time.